Next is CT and joint diseases. So a fetus with congenital heart block, what does that mean? It's associated with neonatal lupus. So I want you to know the treatment regimens for rheumatoid arthritis and lupus. So rheumatoid arthritis for mild, so there's, they have similar treatments, that's why I wanted to compare and contrast them. So rheumatoid arthritis mild disease is treated with NSAIDs. And then the disease modifying drug of choice is methotrexate. And for rheumatoid arthritis flares, it's treated with steroids. Versus um, lupus, the mild version of lupus is treated with NSAIDs. The disease modifying is hydroxychloroquine, so the disease modifying drugs are different. And then for flares is also steroids. And you dis diagnose rheumatoid arthritis based on the clinical presentation of bilateral symmetric metacarpal phalangeal and proximal interphalangeal joint stiffness and erythema that's worse in the morning and it improves throughout the day. It spares the DIP. What you'll do is it'll have elevated ANA, elevated rheumatoid factor, and the specific one is elevated anti-citrullinated protein, anti-CCP. And then versus lupus, there's a mnemonic soap brain MD, serositis, so all like they could have pleuritis, pericarditis, oral ulcers, arthritis, photosensitivity, which means that their skin gets burned really easily and blisters easily, <clears throat> blood, so pancytopenia, anemia, thrombocytopenia, leukopenia, renal, they can have lupus nephritic syndrome, which is a combination of hematuria and proteinuria. ANA, I is immunoglobulins, so that should remind you of anti-double-stranded DNA and anti-Smith antibodies. And then N for neuro, there can be psychiatric manifestations of lupus and M for malar rash and D for discoid rash. So four out of those 11 means that there's a 99% chance that you have lupus. The next is antiphospholipid syndrome. This person is the female who has had recurrent miscarriages and random episodes of uh, thrombotic episodes like DVT or PE. And it's usually has a prolonged PTT and PT that isn't corrected by a mixing study. And they also have false elevations of VDRL, so false syphilis positives. And uh, remember that this person has a, a hypercoagulable state. <clears throat> so gout is a sudden onset of super uh, painful joint. The classic joint is the metatarsophalangeal joint. The base of the big toe will be inflamed and swollen and it will be super painful with an acute onset that can even wake the patient up at night. The next step is the arthrocentesis. You want to analyze the fluid and in the, in the fluid, it'll show negatively birefringent crystals which will be yellow needle shaped crystals that will be diagnostic for gout. If there are positively birefringent crystals, rhomboid shaped crystals, then this is called pseudo gout. And pseudo gout uh, is associated with chondrocalcinosis, which is where on x-ray you'll see calcifications of cartilage. And then gout, the acute flare is treated with NSAIDs or colchicine. The contraindication for that is kidney disease. So someone with CKD, you can't give NSAIDs or colchicine. So then the next treatment would, would be intraarticular steroids. The next is knowing the difference between polymyositis versus polymyalgia rheumatica versus fibromyalgia. They love to test you on knowing the differences, but the key thing here is that polymyalgia rheumatica is, think stiffness, polymyositis, think weakness, and fibromyalgia, think pain. So those are your starting points. So let's start with polymyositis. So this person has symmetric weakness, <clears throat> CPK will be elevated because this is due to inflammation of the muscles. So CPK is an, a muscle enzyme, so this will be elevated. And you treat this with steroids. 
Polymyositis also can have cutaneous manifestations. The two high yields ones are Gautron's papules, which are red papules over the knuckles, and the heliotrope rash, which is a rash around the orbit of the eye. The key thing here too I want you to remember is that polymyositis is usually associated with the underlying malignancy. Next is polymyalgia rheumatica. Polymyalgia rheumatica, think of an elderly patient with stiffness and pain in their hip and shoulders. And usually this person will have an elevated ESR, but the CPK will be normal. And then you treat this with low dose steroids. Polymyalgia rheumatica is also associated with something called temporal arteritis or giant cell arteritis, which is vasculitis of the temporal artery along the side of the head. It will be big and inflamed. And this is an emergency because it can cause blindness. So you want to treat that. Well, when you biopsy it, you'll see giant cells, but you want to treat it with high dose steroids. And polymyalgia rheumatica is extremely responsive to steroids. So they'll see immediate improvement. Last is fibromyalgia. And I want you to think about pain, especially over the trigger points. So they have symmetric pain on pressure points over the neck, the shoulders, the butt, the knees, all along the back. And the pain is considered constant and aching. Remember that this person there's a, is associated with mood disorders and somatic symptom disorders. The treatment for this is either a TCA or a SNRI like venlafaxine. And then anybody with a sudden onset of psoriasis or people who have molluscum contagiosum, remember that this is associated with HIV. So the best next step is to test for HIV. And that is CT and joint diseases.